So we're going to produce the three circles and we're going to insert into that the prophet stories, which is especially helpful for when sharing with Muslims. Um, we've been asked for like numbers of people have asked for videos of this. Uh, we've just been learning it and practicing it recently. So I'm not pretending to be like excellent at this or especially experienced at sharing with Muslims. But hopefully the video would be helpful. Um, let us know if you need any more information or any help. And you can, if you can do a better video, you can go reproduce <laughs> this as well, which is great. Okay, so here we go. This is a picture of our world and the world we're living in. We can see that it's cracked and broken and we notice that everywhere. Just everywhere we look as we turn on the news or observe our communities. And sometimes we feel broken as well. Now in the beginning, we know, certainly in the, the Christian faith and in, uh, in your own Muslim books, the Quran, um, that it tells us very clearly like the world was perfect when God created it. Um, but you know, beginning with those first two people in the garden, Adam and Eve or Adam and Hawa, they disobeyed God's commands and went their own way. We describe that as really as just disobedience to God's ways. They went their own way. The Bible specifically calls that sin. And this sin, it leads us into brokenness and shame. We carry shame because of our disobedience to God's ways. And then when we're in brokenness, we try and escape those feelings of brokenness that we all encounter. People try many different things to escape the brokenness. We'll try to be very successful, uh, to make money and maybe have a great career and to do better in life. Maybe we'll want the perfect family and partner and uh, perfect relationships. Others, we're going to be very serious about our religion and we're going to seek to try and obey everything um, about our tradition and our religion. But what we know is these things, they don't fix our brokenness. If you look, they're just like bungee cords. However far you jump, it's just going to pull you back into brokenness. Now, God sees this. Creator God, he sees this. And he has a way, a way to bring us back to God, a way to deal with our shame and uh, our lack of obedience to God's ways. And what we see all the way through uh, the stories of the prophets is this. In the beginning there we see Adam. And we see Eve in the garden there. <coughs> and they disobey God's commands right at the beginning there. But God, he finds an animal and he sacrifices this animal, sheds blood and he takes the skin of that animal and he clothes Adam and Eve. He clothes them and covers their shame. So God takes an animal and covers their shame. And then we also see in the story of Abraham and his son. We see this. Abraham's instructed by God to go and to sacrifice his son. And uh, he, he's trying to obey God. He goes to do that. And as they're there ready for him to sacrifice his son, God provides an animal caught in a thicket, a ram or a, a, a lamb caught in the thicket. And uh, just as he's about to sacrifice his son, God speaks to him. And says to him very clearly, like, don't kill your son, but take the animal and sacrifice the animal. And that will be an acceptable sacrifice at that time. So we see that happening. And then uh, we see this. We know the story of Moses and the children of God who were captive in Egypt. And uh, God speaks to them and he through the story, prepares them 
to leave Egypt. And he speaks and he says on this final night, uh, the angel of death is going to go through the land and it's going to take the firstborn of every family. And uh, they're, they're going to die, the firstborn of every family. But God speaks to Moses and he says to him, he says, your people, he says, I want you to take a perfect sacrifice, a perfect spotless lamb. And I want you to sacrifice that lamb. And I want you to take the blood of that sacrifice. And I want you to paint it on the doorposts of your house and across the top there. And God promises this, that when the angel goes through the land, that he will see the blood over your doorposts and he will pass over you. He will not take your first son. And so the blood of the sacrifice will save you from the angel that will bring destruction. And then finally, we see the prophet John. And the prophet John, or Yahya, one day he's walking along and he has his disciples with him. And he sees Jesus on this particular day. And the prophet John, he points at Jesus and he says these words. He says, look, behold, Jesus, he's the Lamb of God who came to pay the price and to be the sacrifice to take away the sins of the world. And so he points at Jesus, who is the Lamb of God. And it's Jesus then, we know, who gives his life upon the cross. And Jesus becomes that final sacrifice, that spotless Lamb, given to take away the sin and the shame that every one of us feel because of our disobedience to God. And you know, through this sacrifice of Jesus, Isa al Masah, through this sacrifice of Jesus, we have a wonderful opportunity that through him, if we will turn away from our rebellion, from our sin, from <coughs> our shame, and if we will believe upon this message about Jesus, the Messiah, if we will take this Jesus as our King and Lord and begin to follow him truly from our hearts, learning to obey him. He promises that as we follow him, by his Holy Spirit, he will make us new. He has the power to make us new and to forgive our sin and our shame through the sacrifice of Jesus and to take us and bring us in to his kingdom. And then we ask questions at the end, like, do you understand this? You can ask that question. You can talk about that just briefly. And then we ask people, where are you today? Are you here in brokenness? Or have you had your sin and your shame forgiven? Have you been restored into relationship with God? Are you sure that your sin has been dealt with and that you have been forgiven? Where are you today? Where would you like to be? And then finally, is there anything stopping you today from turning your life over to Jesus, to believing on him, repenting of your sin, and beginning to turn and follow Jesus as King and Lord? So that's with the prophet stories. Hopefully that's helpful. Um, we'll talk about it in the room here. But this is just simply how you could train it uh, to a room of people. Good for the video. If anyone on the video sees this and wants anything, you can get in touch in the footnotes at the bottom there. Hopefully that's helpful for everyone. Um, like I said, like we're not perfect to this. We're just learning. Uh, we've seen an uptick in the m numbers of Muslims that we're encountering in our own towns. Uh, maybe you're experiencing that as well. So just don't be afraid. Just share the gospel with them and trust the Lord to work. Okay, thanks everyone.